Welcome to Genetic Counseling Awareness Channel with Katie Lee. All the best resources you'll ever need at Genetic Counseling Awareness Channel. Hi everyone, I'm Katie Lee, CGC, and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm talking about what is a genetic counselor and how do you become one? I realize I need to zoom out a little bit in scope because a lot of you who've reached out to me are people who are just beginning to learn about the career of genetic counseling and think about whether or not it's a good fit for you. So today in the next five minutes, I'm going to explain what's a genetic counselor and genetic counselors are experts in medical genetics and counseling too. In order to become a genetic counselor, you complete an 18 month to 24 month master's program, which is usually called a master's in genetic counseling, which you can do after you complete an undergrad degree. But what exactly do genetic counselors do? It took me a while to come up with my own definition because the roles of genetic counseling is expanding significantly. There are genetic counselors who've created their own private practice, who are their own business owners. There are genetic counselors in management positions. There are genetic counselors who never speak with patients or clinicians. So my definition of what genetic counselors do is that they educate and or support patients and or clinicians like doctors or nurses by determining or explaining how genetic variants can affect an individual or an individual's health. So that's my definition of what a genetic counselor does, but let me expand upon that a bit. Traditionally, most genetic counselors used to work in places like OBGYN offices, seeing pregnant patients, pediatric hospitals like a children's hospital, and in cancer clinics. I would think of these traditional genetic counseling jobs as clinical roles, where a genetic counselor meets with a family or an individual, for example, I would think of these as traditional or clinical roles. And let's break out some of these examples. So in an OBGYN office, a genetic counselor might meet with a pregnant person and their support or their family member or partner to explain what genetic testing options are available routinely in pregnancy. Or they might meet with a pregnant person who has had some differences noted on their pregnancy on ultrasound and offer targeted genetic testing that might identify what's causing those birth differences or birth defects that are noted. A genetic counselor in this setting will explain how the genetic test works, how long it's going to take to get back, maybe pros and cons of doing the testing versus not doing the testing, what information you may or may not glean from it, any risks. And the genetic counselor can help a patient make a decision about whether or not to order that testing. If the patient decides to order the testing, then a genetic counselor will be available to explain the results when they come back. It's a pretty similar idea for cancer clinics and for um, pediatric hospitals. In cancer clinics, a genetic counselor will meet with somebody who maybe has a significant family history of a lot of cancers or early onset cancers, or somebody who has a cancer diagnosis themselves, and help them determine whether they might want to order genetic testing to identify whether there's a hereditary cause for that cancer history, um, and then help explain the results and implications for themselves and family members. Same thing with children's hospitals. A genetic counselor will typically see a patient in combination with a medical geneticist to evaluate a child patient who maybe has multiple things going on, like intellectual disability, seizure disorder, birth defects, to figure out if there is a genetic syndrome that explains this combination of differences. And again, consent the parents and the child, depending on their age and abilities to the testing. If they're interested in it, help order the correct testing and then explain the results and what it means when the results come back. So there are many specialties beyond just cancer, prenatal and pediatrics. Those are some basic ones. I, for instance, work in the setting of fertility or oftentimes it's called preconception genetic counseling or ART genetic counseling, assisted reproductive technology. I help patients who are planning or trying to become pregnant. And I've done this in many different settings. I currently work at a sperm bank, so I help review sperm donor applicants and find applicants who are good candidates to donate based on their family personal medical history and their genetic results. I've also worked in an IVF clinic where I helped patients in that realm think about genetic testing they can do on their embryos and answer questions about their own family history. And I've also worked at a genetic testing laboratory. And in that setting, I counseled oftentimes physicians, sometimes nurse practitioners or nurses, um, to answer their questions about the genetic testing that our laboratory ran on their embryos or on their patients, and also to counsel the patients themselves on the results. So genetic counselors these days, a good number of genetic counselors work remotely from home using their phone and computer, and many genetic counselors are still in person seeing patients in a clinic. 
And just to name a few other specialties, there are genetic counselors whose whole job is focused on cardiology or neurology or adult onset disorders or metabolic disease or pharmacogenetics. Um, how our genetic variants can affect our reaction to certain drugs, um, personalized medicine. There are even some genetic counselors who specialize in a single disease like cystic fibrosis. And the list could go on and on and on. And I'm sure it will only continue to expand. Now, I mostly talked about clinical roles where genetic counselors are employed by maybe a large institution or a private practice to counsel mostly patients, but there are many genetic counselors who work in industry. They might work for um, a pharmaceutical company. They may work for an insurance company. They may work for a laboratory and provide genetic counseling services that way. Now, a very common question I get from people who are just beginning to learn about genetic counseling is, do you work in the lab? Yes, I have worked for a laboratory, but I'm not somebody who's in the wet lab. And I don't know any genetic counselors who, once they have their master's degree, go work in the wet lab extracting DNA or performing different types of genetic tests. Usually that's not the role that genetic counselors are playing. Another common question I get is, do genetic counselors need to be extroverts? Do they need to talk to patients and clinicians all day? No. No, I think it is crazy that there's this like stereotype or the certain personality that um, some people think genetic counselors need to have. We want diversity. We want all sorts of different people. I'm an introvert. There are a lot of genetic counseling roles where you don't talk to patients or clinicians. There are genetic counselors who interpret genetic results and maybe write genetic test result reports, um, interpret what certain variants mean, whether they cause disease or don't cause disease, or it's unknown whether they may or may not cause disease. So yes, there are genetic counseling roles for people who don't wish to speak with patients. I could go on and on forever because the awesome thing about genetic counseling is there are all sorts of different career paths you can take, but I want to keep it relatively short. These days in 2022, there are dozens of genetic counseling job postings all across the country and for remote or telehealth positions. So the job market is excellent if you're a genetic counselor. I graduated back in 2015 and even then the job market was not nearly as hot, um, but I still had, I think, three different job offers before my graduation date. So it is quite easy, I would say, to secure a job um, upon graduation, which is awesome. A few other things to know, most genetic counselors are highly satisfied with their jobs. And as of 2021, the average genetic counseling salary was about 98,000 a year. If you want to learn more about genetic counseling, I'm going to drop some links down below where you can learn more. Otherwise, I'd encourage you to check out my other videos and let me know down below what questions you have about genetic counseling. Don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching. Bye guys.